the thriller of the night. What a finish last night. Mavs, Grizzlies, Luka Doncic, this was magic. Pick it up fourth quarter, less than five to go. Mavs down six. Doncic working on John Moran, the step back. Look at him. Oh, that's the old Dirk Nowitzki. And so Doncic getting it going. Cuts the lead to four. 30 seconds left. Mavs down by three. Doncic takes the handoff. Going strong to the hole. Doncic cuts it to one. Two seconds left now. Here's your ball game. Mavericks down by two. This is the play they draw up. Got to get it in. Here comes Luka at the buzzer. Oh, he throws up a one-handed three, and it's good. Mark Cuba wants to know, was it a two? Was it a three? Guess what? It's a three. That's your ball game. Doncic, 29 points, nine assists. Lucky or not, it winds up being a game-winning shot on a crazy night around the NBA. Tim Legler rejoins us here, and there are so many things going on around the sport. But, Tim, I wanted to bring you back. We had an interesting conversation in our first hour, and we weren't able to really get to it as, as much as I would like. Because um, the, the, the spotlight game last night was Sixers and Nets, and so many of the Nets stars don't play. And we're in a circumstance how in this, this compressed schedule that we have in the second half of the season, we're seeing more and more of this. The people you talk to around the sport, what are they saying and what are the concerns? Yeah, I mean, the concerns are exactly what you're alluding to, Greeny. Right now, unfortunately, everybody's not aligned on the same page, right? There's different interests here. I mean, you look at the teams, their interest is they're trying to preserve players. And they have bought in because of analytics that load management's going to help do that. I actually think load management, first of all, isn't as big a problem this year as in years past. I think this year it's been injuries that have really derailed these marquee matchups that we look forward to, or the fans look forward to, the networks, obviously, the sponsors. All of those people are losing out because you get these matchups that you circle and you want to see teams at full strength, and it's just not happening this year. It's at an alarming rate, really, when you look at the top guys in this league. I don't think there's been a season in which the top 20 players in the NBA have missed more games than they have this year. That's obviously a big problem, but the teams are looking at it like, even with the guys that have legitimate injuries, we're going to err on the side of caution because of the compressed schedule, because of the shorter offseason. We want these guys to be fresh for the postseason when it matters most. So we're going to take a little bit longer, even with what seems like fairly minor injuries in a lot of cases. Guys are just taking longer to get back. When you combine that with the load management, now you've got a serious problem on your hands because there just aren't enough of these guys available on a nightly basis. Take, for instance, Brooklyn and Philly. You know, the top three players for Brooklyn, and there's been 432 available minutes in those three games against Philadelphia. For those guys to play, they've given us 62. James Harden played one game and Kyrie played last night. That's it. So when you look at you know, trying to figure out the pecking order in Eastern Conference, you think, well, Brooklyn's healthy. They're going to roll through. Problem is, I want to see them stack up against Philadelphia at full strength. I want to see them against Milwaukee at full strength. We're just not getting those matchups. And certainly the Western Conference has been the same situation with what's going on with the Lakers. So it's unfortunate for the fans at the top of the list. But the networks, the sponsors, and guys like me that want to break it down and try to figure out how these teams stack up against each other, we're the losers in this. Uh, in a year that's really been unprecedented with the number of guys that have missed time. Yeah, it's a very complicated situation. We'll dive into it a little more on radio later today. Thank you, Legs. Great to see you. Thanks for getting up and jumping in here. Meantime, the Nets and the Sixers tied for the best record in the East, but the Nets were basically playing without an all-star team. No Kevin Durant, no James Harden, no Blake Griffin, no LaMarcus Aldridge. Oh, Kyrie played last night and there he is doing a little bit of his Kyrie magic and he is pretty much unstoppable as he gives you the handles there and that's up and good for the bucket but this was a night that belonged to Joel Embiid look at him here third quarter Sixers up eight how does he get that to go third time this year he had 35 and 10 through three quarters it was his night and then with a minute and a half to go the Nets down four Bruce Brown he is driving, but Embiid is doing it on the defensive end as well. And Simmons going to get a loose ball and take it away. Embiid 39 and 13 on the night. And it is uh, the Philadelphia 76ers who get the big win. Again, the Nets were missing so much of their firepower. No KD, no James Harden and others. And in case you missed it, yesterday, our buddy Stephen A. Smith had these thoughts about the Nets load management. This is the BS that I'm talking about right here, right now. This is that stuff that I'm talking about. And then y'all wonder why I be calling cats out. I mean, damn. Damn. 
How many days off do you need? You Blake, you, 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 you LaMarcus Aldridge, what? For what? What have you been doing that you need a vacation day? Oh, I'm sorry, a personal day, because Lord knows we, we, know, we don't know what's happening now. Regular season games, it, it's all about the two months. That's what you're getting paid for for two months? No, you're getting paid for a full regular season and the playoffs. You know, and Tim Legler joins me here this morning. And, and, and Tim, you know, this is a complicated situation, but I think Stephen A. speaks for a lot of fans who are frustrated with this. What do you think? Yeah, look, I understand where he's coming from because right now I think, unfortunately, the interests aren't all aligned with everybody that's involved in the NBA. So, obviously, you know, some of these are legitimate injuries. I don't think load management actually has been as big an issue this year as it has been in the past several. You know, load management became a topic. It became something that's a concern for the league, you know, probably four or five years ago. It's not as bad this year. These are injuries. I think what's different, Greeny, is that injuries today – that, you know, back when I played or even 10 years ago would have kept guys out much less time. Teams are erring on the exercise of caution now and keeping these guys out much longer. As a result, we get these marquee matchups and nobody's playing in these games. And it's, it's a problem. So who suffers? The fans first, no question. Networks, sponsors, and guys like me that want to break it down and try to figure out how these teams stack up against each other. Saw an incredible number uh, last night of the 432 minutes available to the big three against the Sixers this year, they've gotten 62 minutes. Uh, one game out of James Harden, one game out of Kyrie. That's all they've gotten against Philly. So how are we supposed to figure out as an analyst how these teams stack up against each other? It's impossible. And obviously the fans miss out more than anybody because you look forward to these big games. And unfortunately, we just have had so many guys not participate. Let's hope that when playoffs get here and all they're focused on is winning and rest isn't as big an issue, that we're going to get these teams at full strength. Um, if that's the case, we could have a phenomenal postseason that could make us forget about a lot of this, but that remains to be seen because a lot of these guys have been dealing with lingering injuries pretty much all season. Let's see how the teams handle it going forward. And the schedule here in the second half has been so condensed for a variety of reasons. That's been a factor in this as well. Timmy Legs, thanks for getting up with us early here. I appreciate it. I got to leave it there for the moment, but we'll do more. Powerful. We've seen guys this quick, but rarely have we seen a guy with those dimensions that's got this kind of touch and finesse when he shoots the basketball. And I think that's really what sets him apart from most people. And I think also he's transformed himself and his mentality this year. This is the first season he's really had in the NBA where he's committed every night to dominating you. And there is no real matchup for him or no real answer for him. He does it any way he wants to. This is what I'm talking about. The power to get the guy deep, but then the finesse to shoot that fade away over an elite post defender, Andre Andre Jordan. And now, because he's such a great shooter, he can turn and face one of the best up fakes in the league, uh, guard or big man, and able to blow by and get the dunk. And this is here, just flat out, we call this bully ball. When he hits him with this shoulder at the end, I saw the air physically leave DeAndre Jordan's body, and he ends up with a layup. And then I love this. Hey, turn down the three. That would have been a contested shot. Take one more dribble, get to an 18-foot jumper. Uh, now you want to run a double team at him? No, well, if you're going to run a small guy, he's just going to shoot over you with a fadeaway jumper. Everything was in effect in this game. And the irony of it is, I thought at the start of the game, his energy level was low. I didn't think his body language was great, and he was clearly bothered by that knee. Uh, he was limping around a little bit, and you look up, and he's got 21-6 and six at halftime, mm -hmm. despite the fact that I really didn't think he was into the game or, or physically able to do what he normally does, and he ends up, obviously, with another monster night. I think his mentality is to be an MVP, and I believe he's going to get enough games in to deserve it. And if they end up with the number one seed in the Eastern Conference, Jarrell Abid is my MVP. I've been saying it since mid-January. I'm not going off of that. I don't care that he missed a few weeks with an injury. All right, yeah, his game has vaulted. And an 85% free throw shooter, which is so key in the playoffs down late if he's going to get hacked by the other team. All right, Tim, uh, a lot of players resting. I know the league, the story came out today, Baxter Holmes. You know, they're concerned about this compressed schedule, people getting hurt, people sitting out of games, maybe even if they're not hurt. What's your take on the look, uh, the compressed schedule, the injuries, the whole thing? Well, look, the compressed schedule, the shorter off season, the injuries, I think the airing on the side of caution plays into this for the part of the team. There's no denying that it's not really the same product that we've seen this season that you'd hope for. And, I, and you saw, saw a statistic today. When you look at the All-Stars from this season, 2021, at the end of this year, 
they're going to have missed a higher percentage of games, that collection of players, than as the second most in the history of the league. 